Las Vegas, Nevada, home to many professional poker players. What happens when you take one of them who's got 2.3 million in career tournament earnings and a couple of World Series bracelets and introduce them to a soap star from One Life to Live and Days of Our Lives? Well, in the case of Phil and Farrah Galfon, you get not just wedding bells, but also a little career shift. This is Little Egg Harbor. She is a nine-year-old Shih Tzu from Brooklyn. Wait a minute, Egg Harbor's in New Jersey. I know. When I lived in New York, I would go play at Borgata most weekends. And you were working on the soap circuit, yeah. right? You were doing One Life to Live and Days of Our Lives. Yeah, One Life to Live was in New York. I moved to New York in 07, and some of the crew uh, played poker. I just got really obsessed with it, and I was like, I need to learn more about this. At what point was it that you and Phil met? <sighs> we met through mutual friends. Tinder! Oh. Twitter. Twitter, really? Yeah. I was doing a reality show, and the producers wanted me to have Twitter. So I thought, well, if I'm going to be on Twitter, let me just make the most of it. Who do I want to follow? <laughs> Phil Galfon. But how did you even know about Phil from, from High watching stakes poker? poker? You and him hit it off, and now you had possibly one of the greatest single poker minds out there as a resource. Being completely immersed into the poker community and being at the World Series and the, seeing the business side of the training side and all that, I mean, I just became consumed with it. It was kind of a hard decision to quit acting, but it felt right. Like, I had another passion. It wasn't like I was gonna just go to a nine to five. So. But you're acting on the felt as well a little bit at times, are you not? Like, how do the two meet? Yeah, I think it's helped with my poker face, that and the Botox. Um, <laughs> What are your thoughts, by the way, on being a woman mm -hmm. at the table versus being a man? It all depends how comfortable the men are with themselves. If they are comfortable in their own skin, they don't mind losing to a girl, they like playing with you, they like talking, they're happy if you win. The men that are more insecure and have ego problems, they do not like losing to a girl. Most people will never have an opportunity yeah. to move between 510 and 300, 600, yeah. and even if they were rolled to do it, it would be a really ambitious leap, right? Yeah. So talk to me about that first time where you sat down. I mean, look, yeah, yeah. My first session in Ivy's room. And who's there? Uh, Jean Robert, mm -hmm. he, Bobby Baldwin. He, uh -huh. I mean, all the regulars. JRB had been asking me to play for a while and... What did you make of that, by the way? Because generally speaking, I don't well, think I Jean Robert walks up to like Phil Galfon and goes, hey buddy, you wanna no, come well, in and play? Well that was the joke, like, Phil, you can't play, but your wife can. I guess Phil had seen my confidence go up, or what, I don't know what, but he just, he pulled me out of my 5-10 game one day, and he said, come take a walk with me, and he said, I think you're ready. He just asked me again, and I think you should play. And I was like, right now? I was not ready like that. I couldn't just like Yeah, it's a go, little out of left field. I needed to like absorb it. Okay, so I sit down with 50,000, and uh, I draw the ace for the button. So I get dealt pocket aces on my very first hand. No. And I was like, what is happening? Did you get scared when you got the aces, by the way? <laughs> yes. Right. I didn't, even, I didn't want to play my first hand. Yeah. I wanted to fold. Like, I just got here. I'm just settling in. I ended up losing small on my first session. I think I lost like 60 my first day and then like 30K the second day. And I came home like, like tears brinked. And I said, Phil, if I don't win tomorrow, I, I'm done. He was really supportive and just like gave me a hug. He's like, but whatever you want. Well, the next day I won like 115K. And so I'd like recoup the losses and like was in the black. I'm like, I like this game. <laughs> <laughs> Where was this wedding? Oh, it was at my house. Here? Yeah, we got married here, right, right out there. It was a little, really down to the wire, a bit stressful. It sounds like But that. I had the best mixologist in Vegas um, making my mezcal cocktail, which I renamed the Happy Wife. I have framed cocktail menus next to the With bar. With all the ingredients in it? All there? the ingredients, and it's just so elaborate. So you've never even tried it? Making one? Yeah. It's really intimidating. I just started cooking like two it's or three weeks 300, ago. 300, 600, no limit, but that didn't stop you. Should we make, I feel like we should make some mezcal. I would love to, as long as I mean, it is a little early in the day, but <laughs> when in Vegas. Welcome to downtown Las Vegas, Farah. I see loveliness before us, Matthew, GM of Carson Kitchen. 
What have you brought us? Firstly, our deviled eggs. Um, oh, you love them. I hope better than most, uh, dressed with a black tobacco caviar and a little crispy pancetta. Um, and then a seasonal treat up front here, that is our watermelon and feta salad. Nice, and? Um, crispy chicken skins with smoked honey. When I first got a look at it, I thought it was calamari, because it looked from this piece right here like that, but obviously. Correct, that is wrong. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> She's doing, doing the deviled eggs. Oh, I'm I'm I've, been, I've been spying these, you go there. See, so normally we do it fair, we just go like all in. All in? She knows all about that because she plays poker. Where's my napkin? You took my napkin. So what is your drink called? Um, it's called Pink Smoking Jacket. Oh my God. That's a pretty good <laughs> name. All right, so Farah, if you don't mind, I'm going to employ you as an assistant right now, and I'm going to have you hand me every single ingredient that we need oh. to make this happen. I so thought we were going to saw her in half. Oh. I it, think we'll felt, it felt kind of David Blaine. After this. So we're going to start with Del Maguey Vita Mezcal. Okay. It's not like insanely smoky. It doesn't have a personality that's, you know, so big it can't get along with anybody. Not too subtle either where you wouldn't notice it. I want to smell this before juice. we, we put anything in. Yeah, go ahead, please. Come here. Get your nose on that, Farrah. Why don't you do that as well? All right. Give it a sniff. It's gorgeous. Yeah, earthy. Love it. A little smoky. Probably get like some hints of it maybe some citrus It feels bourbon to me. Too. I feel like it should be a cologne as well. You are welcome to do that. If really? You want. And of that, we're going to do three quarters of an ounce, or 0.75 ounces. So we're going to do a half ounce of this almond syrup. That looks three quarter-ish to me. And then the strawberry one toward the front there, that little pink this fellow. This guy? The yeah. one oh, that you looks need like this ketchup? Again. Yeah, this is not ketchup. That would be weird. <laughs> this is just a fresh strawberry puree. I'm curious what this dark one is. That is creme de cassis. Is that what's next on the list? Mm -hmm. A black currant liqueur. That's a liqueur? We're just gonna do a bar spoon of this. You can use no other spoon, just a bar spoon. No, we're actually to the point where we're gonna shake Oh, we're gonna this. shake so gonna that. What? Fill yeah. that shaker with ice Shake, formality. shake, shake. Thank you, comrade. Yeah, duh. Shake it, shake it. Real quick, shake though, otherwise, it. there we go. Shake. Why'd you make it all awkward? <laughs> Up near the shoulder, oh, good, like it's good. a maraca or something? Did I violate any health codes? Not yet. So over fresh ice in a Collins glass, we're gonna pour contents in. It's gonna get us right about there, which is perfect. And the ginger oh, beer. Oh, sorry. How'd oh, you go? <laughs> and, and the, the ginger, ginger beer. beer. Taste it. I need you to do me something also. I order those at the poker table. This is Carson Kitchen's pink smoking jacket. Normally, we just put one straw in a cocktail. We're gonna have three. Mm -hmm. Oh, all the way? Mm -hmm. oh. What? Nah. Someone call Ollie uh, an Uber. <laughs> I've known Phil Galfon for a while, but never really had a chance to spend time with his wife, Farah, and today was super insightful. She walked away from an accomplished career as a soap star to turn around and become a professional poker player who's not only playing in some of the biggest games in Vegas, but also mixing up mezcal cocktails at one of the best bars in town. Coincidentally, that cocktail's talking to me right now. I'm gonna go.